So I want to give a overview of a little tool that I just find wonderful called Net Data. The website is my-netdata.io. We're going to run through the install real quick. They have a live demo so you can play with it. And I started playing with the live demo and I was like, I've never seen Linux charts quite so pretty. And this is a really great view into your Linux server with a great HTML interface to see what is going on, what's in use, processor usage, and just an unbelievable amount of details, which even includes application grouping uh, to break things down. And it's open source and customizable, so you can really play around with it and come up with some of your own too. So it's, it's not just as you see it, it can be more. So let's jump into the installation real quick. They support a lot of different distributions, so it's not just Linux. They have pre-built binaries for lots of different distributions here. Debian, Arch, Gen2, and including FreeBSD, package for PFSense. That's pretty cool. I mean, so they've, they've actually explored a lot of different options in here. But we're gonna start with the basics and do a Debian install here, and we're just gonna use the auto installer. But I'll leave links in here, so if you wanna do everything manually or go through all this. But I do like that they have an automagical installer and you know, you can just run it. I'm not, like I've talked about this before, they're nice to get things done, but you do have to trust the place you're getting it from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this command here and I'm logged in as root on a Debian box and it's bash. And we're going to curl in this Kickstarter file right there. So all you do is copy it, paste, and this is just a basic load of Debian, like I said, whoops. I don't have curl installed, so before you do that, uh, this is a too basic of a Debian system. So we'll do this and say yes to installing curl, apt get install curl, clear. All right. And we'll run through the installer. It checks to figure out what is need and what's missing from here. And you just basically print enter and it's going to run through apt get install everything it has down here at the bottom. Gonna say yes. It runs and gets all the things needed to get this going. Now it has all the apt packages installed that it went needed. Then it went and grabbed that. Now we're gonna finish the actual install and I'm just pressing enter again. There's not a lot to do here. And that's it. Now they leave you with a couple scripts here. One is a net data updater and they have quick instruction how you can set this up as a cron job that runs, you throw this in the cron daily. If you're not familiar with that, if you go to your Etsy slash cron daily, you can see the different things that are run on a daily cron job in the Linux server and it automatically adds that for you. So it automatically gets the updates from there. So pretty straightforward and that got it all up and running. So let's look at the IP address of this machine. It is 192.168.3.125. Go over to our browser here. And that's it. It's at port one, one, two, three, four, one, nine, 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 nine. So the IP address nine, 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 nine and default, there's no password on this, no anything. So warning, if you expose yourself directly to the internet, on it, I don't know and have not done a ton of research into security, but it does have its own web service and everything that runs. Now, as simple as that, we have it installed and we get all these pretty charts and everything else and shows all the stuff going on, interrupts, softnet. Now it'll break down user groups by memory, by disk allocations, by disk reads and writes. All that's really cool. And I've already got it loaded on one of our servers over here. So it's on our Unify server, which both runs both Unify video and our Unify controller system. We put on here because there's a lot of activity going on in this machine in and out and it's pretty slick to look at so we can look at the disk reads and writes we can jump down here to the networking settings the processes or we can jump over here by users and let's look at cpu usage by user unify creates two users in the system we have the unify video user which is if we single it out by clicking on these or the unify user for the system itself, for the controller Unify. And it's just really neat how I can single out root processes or MongoDB runs as a user. And if you're not familiar with MongoDB, that is the database backend that Unify uses for things. Now, what's kind of cool is when we 
break it down to just being the Unify video. And then I open up our Unify video. And let's see if we go to recordings. Actually, go to some of the previous recordings. And then we look back over here. You'll see some spikes in usage where we did that, so it's a little bit more intense. Um, I don't have time to run out there, but we were playing with it earlier, and we noticed that even running and waving at the camera, which starts a motion record event, uh, spiked a little bit too. And we can go down here to the disk usage. Now, this is where it's probably more telling because we did a disk event right here, which was reading the disk. So actually, if we tile these windows like this, so I'll make this one a little bit smaller. Make this one over here a little smaller. Get this one out of the way. Then filter just for this. We can probably watch what happens when we look through some of the videos. Jump to the timelines. There's Steve when he was leaving. And you're watching over here, you can see peaks in this to see that there's jumps in activity based on me scrolling through and looking at the videos. It's just pretty neat the way all this works and the way you can filter everything down. Now there's a couple little buttons here. I'm just gonna hit the play button on any of these and jump back up to the top over to system overview. So if you do mess with these charts, zooming in and out, plus minus, change the zoom, they got a little button in the middle here that just says chart reset. Now, other cool things are, let me zoom this chart out. Well, actually that's in, so let me zoom out. When you mouse over to certain areas, it jumps around and tells you what the historical charts, like these little charts up here, look like at that moment. So you can actually go, hey, let's look at this little spike right here and figure out what things were, what was going on then. Now, this even works for networking. So here's our network spikes that we've seen. And I like how it syncs all of them together. So what I'm doing here, here's the packet. Here's the sockets that went up when we did this. Good news, no network errors. TCP. It, like I said, you can break these down to so much levels of detail as to what was going on. Really just, it, it's fun to play with this. All right, we've jumped over to my server. I have a few more things running on my server. For example, I have Plex running on it. Now it categorizes as media server just in general because it groups them all together. But if you wanna split something out, that can be done. And the way you do that, and let's jump over to the terminal. All the config files are stored under Etsy net data, so you can customize and tweak this. But we're actually just gonna focus right now on the apps groups. They have a lot of documentation for all the other things in here. And we're gonna find the Plex. So right here's the media grouping and it groups Plex together. And if you wanted to group Plex into just its own services, all you would have to do is go to add a space, put Plex colon and see how they have a star here. So Plex star, we're gonna get rid of this. Service, net, data, restart. Go down here to applications, and now we've got Plex as its own server. So pretty straightforward as to how you group a different application together. So if you have custom applications, you want them listed out here, or you want to group these differently, you simply go and edit that apps underscore groups, and it allows you to customize what applications are running and how they're being used. And I love the way it can single out an application to really nail down what's being done. Now here's the historical when it was under media, now I have it under Plex. So I know specifically that Plex is what's doing this. And like I said, it's easy to customize. It's a lot of fun to play with. It gives you just such a really cool system overview of everything and how it works. It remembers the servers that you were at and we get rid of theirs. Delete it. All right, there we go. So I can jump back and forth between my servers. 
because once they're added, it saves a cookie in the browser, so they go in here. Anyways, it's net data, and I will leave some links below where you can download and play with this for yourself, and I'll leave a link where you can play with the live demos. Sorry you can't play with my servers. That's for me. All right, thanks for watching. If you like the content here, like and subscribe.